now we are into the final objective that is generation of .tip file. First, we will look into the methodology of how all these previous objectives we have seen so far can be utilized in generating the .tip file. As shown, we will be using the AV extracted view of all the cells to generate a netlist file using the ADE window. Then with a model file containing all the MOS parameters and a netlist, we run the liberate using a tickle file containing some environmental definitions to finally generate the .lib file. So listing out the methodology into process steps creates six major steps and these are listed here. We will follow each of these steps in parallel with cadence and we might again spend some considerable amount of time on this pre-processing step before we regenerate the .lib file. So while regenerating, we will also try to generate .v file along with HTML files. To generate netlist file, we begin by creating a new cell view named. So ensure that you select your appropriate design library and in my case it is DICD. So now let us create a new schematic and let us label it as std lib. Okay. So and click OK. And now we have to import all the cells that we have designed from our DICD design library into this schematic. So click on I, click on browse and navigate to DICD and wherein you could able to see our D flip flop, inverter, NAND, NOR are all has to be placed inside this. So once this entire schematic is, is filled with the cells from our design library, we can click on this check and save option. So when you do this, you might get a warning message just because of the unconnected symbols. Okay. So kindly ignore this and then click on launch ADL. And in this ADL window, we have to generate a netlist. Now, before we proceed in generating the netlist, we want this symbols to get attached to AV extracted view rather than to schematic. And we have already done this particular process step by clicking on setup and then environment. And then you need to place the AV extracted as the first view name in the switch view list option. So once this is done, then all the cell symbols will be attached to the AV extracted view of these cells. And the next task is to generate the netlist. Now click on simulation and click on netlist and click on create. So you could able to see that the AD has created a netlist containing all the cell designs. You could able to see the cell name of our default flop and the view is AV extracted and it also contains information that are related to R and C components of our polygons. Okay. And along with it, we also have the global supply definitions. So you can just run through this particular file wherein it contains all the R and C component along with the transistors that are placed inside the cells. Okay. So click on this file, click on save as and save this under dut.ses as its file name. As you could see that the global definition for power supply has a variable named as VDD with exclamatory. But this exclamatory symbol cannot be read by the liberate tool. So we need a Perl script to remove this exclamatory symbol from all the places where the VDD with exclamatory is being defined. So in order to do this, we have to copy the Perl script from 
the location of lib files in your home directory. So when you list this command, you will find that this directory lib files will contain car.tickle and gptk.acs along with a Perl script file which is the one that is meant to remove the VDD with exclamatory symbol from our dut.acs. So what you can do is you can just copy all of these files into a new directory. We will try to create a new directory named as DICD VLSI and the corresponding user number of your lab. So now I'm going to assume that I'm working in VLSI 13 and I'm going to create a directory named DICD VLSI 13. Okay. And you can just navigate into this DICD with the CD command and then try to copy all the files that are there under this lib files under your home directory. So just type in the copy command cp pointing to the home directory with the title symbol and then lib files and then put a star space a single dot. So once you list this command you will find all of these files that are contained under this lib files is being copied into this DICD VLSI 13. We also have to copy our dut.acs file into this newly created DICD VLSI 13 directory. So just type in the command cp and then point to the parent directory and then look for dut.acs as our source and the destination is our current directory which you can point with a single dot. So now when you again list it you will find our DUT file is copied into this current working directory. Now we'll use this Perl script to remove all this VDD with exclamatory symbol by simply typing this command Perl the script file name sptr2elc.pl followed by dut.scs. So it's just one single click and if you want you can just verify the same by using a gedit and opening your dut.scs. As you could be able to see that vdd with exclamatory symbol is being replaced with vdd once this script has been run on the dut.scs file. Again, summarizing the entire steps that we performed at the end in this particular slide. Okay, so once you have done with this, the next step is to run the liberate tool with car.tickle script. Now, the corresponding command that is used during this run is shown here. Now, there is a second part in this particular command which will help us to store the log information into user 13 dot log since I'm working under 13. Okay, so once this command is executed on your terminal, this would take quite a long time to complete the characterization process. Also, ensure that the car dot tickle file that is used in this command is defined properly in accordance to the previous explanatory video. So now I can just invoke the tool liberate with the following command liberate and then the tickle command the, tip, the tickle file and then I pipeline the logs through this command and I give a name for the log to be saved. So just click on enter and this will start characterizing your cells. So this has taken quite a long time to generate the .lib file that we have given at the end of the uh, tickle file. So now uh, there is a status that is given. I have simulated uh, four cells and all the four cells has got passed. So it's a requirement that everyone have to have this tickle file been passed. 
So now we'll just look into the file that is generated by typing this ls command and that has to show us the lib file that has got generated. Now we are going to pre-process the .lib file that has got generated. There are basically three major steps involved in this pre-processing step. So first open the .lib file using a G editor. As a first step, redefine the area information for all the cells. As you could note that by default, the area information that is contained in this .lib file for all the cells are given as zero. So we need to define the area information for all the cells. And as an illustration, let us take our inverter cell layout. Uh, where we know that the height of the inverter is 15 micrometer and the width is 2.4 micrometer and the total area will be the product of height and the width which gives us 36 micrometer square. Also note that you have to specify only the value of 36 as the area has a default scale of 1 micrometer square. The next two steps are with respect to our D flip-flop design. These steps are necessary while designing sequential circuits like flip-flops, latches, finite state, missions, and these steps becomes complex while going to higher level of abstraction in cell design. Basically, the second step involves uh, the definition of next state information using the EFF group along with the two variables iq and iqn. If you carefully look into the syntax, you can understand what each individual parameters signifies. Let us consider the next state parameter. It signifies that when the clock is active, the next state of the flip-flop is the input d. This next state definition will become long if you are working on a JK flip-flop. The third line signifies the active edge of the clock signal. The third step involves redefinition of function information for both the outputs in terms of our flip-flop group variables as shown in the previous step. So the second and the third are basically related to our D flip-flop and these are the corresponding changes that we have to make in our .lib file. So, once the pre-processing steps are done, again invoke this liberate tool without any script file just by typing liberate in your terminal. And then read in the processed.lib file again into the liberate tool. And then finally write down the Verilog file first containing only the functional information and that is given a name as stdlibnd.v and the second containing the timing information along with the functional information with this appropriate switch. Okay, So note that the only difference between both these Verilog is that the first one contains only the functional information whereas the second one contains both the timing as well as the functional information. So in order to extract the timing information we have to provide the switch spec params and the style that is going to be used is a table style with minimum average and maximum as its index. 
Now, once we generate the .v files, the next step is to write down the HTML format and where the DIR specifies that put all this HTML file under the tt underscore HTML directory. So once these things are done, you can type the command exit to close the liberate tool. as well as the folder tt underscore html directory that has created now to just give a glimpse of what it has generated i'll just get with the directory tt underscore html and then i'm just going to invoke the firefox to open this index.html file yes, this is the output that was generated index.html and uh, if you're able to see all the pin capacitance and leakage power delay and the constraint information like hold and setup time so all the informations are available for each of the cells that we have characterized i can even just get into the inverter and see those informations in it